Hello and welcome back to the Clap Experiment. I was not expecting or prepared to do another video today. <clears throat> but I just got done watching Dr. Campbell's video on a recent study done on a certain medication that is, not, as far as I can tell, still not allowed to be talked about on YouTube. Um, I am going to link that video in the description because I was asked the other day, is this World War III thing trying to cover up something else? Um, we might now have the answer. And at the time, I thought, no, it's just, it's a series of bad circumstances, and perhaps somebody's trying to take advantage of it. The timing on this could not have been better or worse, depending on how you look at it. But, um... It is becoming very obvious with the information that is coming out right now that systematically people were killed over the last two years for the sake of profit and benefiting those in power as they tend to do in situations that they can take advantage of. And... Uh, Yeah, that's this this might end up being the the actual crime of the century. Like what is happening in Ukraine right now? Nothing compared to what you're going to learn about with uh Dr. Campbell's uh video. Alex Jones is right again. There's several things that I noticed in the last 2 years that stood out to me uh pertaining the pandemic, the uh, lack of treatment options, the policies that hospitals were placing on what would happen if certain protocol were not followed. Usually, doctors are given a lot of leeway as to how to treat a patient. It's between the doctor and the patient, as long as it's ethical, as long as there's no no harm that's going to be um, done to the patient. Um, usually insurance is like the big factor in between patient and doctor relationship. The treatment is insurance going to pay for this. In this situation, you had policies put in place where if doctors prescribe certain drugs, to a patient with a certain diagnosis, they would lose their license and they would be fired. I worked in healthcare for 14 years and doctors have almost always been encouraged to use medications uh, off-label. It's how they gather information. If uh, somebody comes in with a certain type of infection they might try a new uh, antibiotic that is not particularly normally used for, for this type of infection. But they might prescribe it seeing that nothing else worked. Yeah. And then if they get certain results, they can contact the company and say, Hey, look, um, you know, I tried it with uh, a couple of my patients. It seems to work here. Maybe it's something to look into. That way they're able to brand that medication to treat other things besides the one thing that it's good for. Um, I've said this before, but this is how we ended up with Viagra. A very, very noticeable. It's not even a side effect. This is what happens when you take this blood pressure medication. Have a good time. <sighs> but over the last two years, what we have seen is the opposite of that. The regulation of using certain drugs off-label, the possibility of being fired, um, being able, unable to practice because you are acting as a doctor, using your education and experience in order to prescribe the best treatment for your patient. 
Doctors were not allowed to do that. And that should be a huge red flag for what was going on over the last two years. The other thing that I noticed is that when this certain drug was mentioned, you could find statistics online showing the rate of infection in different countries, countries that use this drug on a regular basis for other things outside of uh, the pandemic that was happening. And people were starting to form a hypothesis as to, well, if this is common here and they don't appear to be getting the, the disease at a rate that other countries who don't use it are getting it, maybe this is something we should look into. But it was treated like the 2020 election where people had evidence, or at least they said they had evidence, they went to court. The court, without looking at the evidence, said there's no merit here, which, again, how do you, how do you dictate that there's no merit to the case if you're not willing to look at the evidence that is being presented to the case? But they did. That's exactly what they did. So then we have the situation where, with this drug, People would say, well, we need to look at this. And then the response is, there's no evidence to show that this drug has any effect on the pandemic. And then they would say, well, we need to do studies. Well, we're not doing studies because there's no evidence to show that it works. It's a catch-22. They're saying that they need evidence to do a study. The study itself would be evidence, yay or nay, as to whether or not it works. Why were they so scared to look at this drug to see if it was effective? <laughs> One, nobody owns a, pat a patent on it. Two, it costs more to wrap it up and ship it than it does to produce. So, what are we left with? The, the usual greed situation. This is the point where I say that Alex Jones is right again. Um, it's been coming up a lot lately. A lot of things have come out that you know, people go back and go, didn't, didn't he say something about war starting in, in February of 20? Uh, how, how did he know that? Well, you go back and you watch the actual episode, the entire thing, and he, he really explains it in detail. So when it comes to uh, this drug and the situation that we've been in for the last two years, um, I think it's very important that everybody learn and not forget that people overall, especially if they don't know you, will put profit and their self-motivations over, over you and the people you care about at a moment's notice. It's, it's appalling. Uh, any, any member of Congress who is trading stocks in pharmaceutical companies and medical companies over the last two years should absolutely positively be fired uh, escorted out of the Capitol building, in some cases thrown in prison for profiting off of the death of almost a million Americans, especially since 200 members of Congress and their families received this treatment that they denied everybody else. And we've known that. We've known that for a while. Thankfully, Joe Rogan was smart enough to hunt down a doctor who'd offer something besides being put on a freaking ventilator. Because if he didn't do that, we probably would not know what was going on for, for the people who were uh, elite enough, better than us, to receive a certain, certain medication that most definitely helped the fact that most members of Congress did not die from this illness. Going back to the, um, 
the information about said drug. Um, I, I was getting into a lot of internet debates, arguments with friends about this, this treatment. And they would ask for evidence or proof. And of course, because the studies weren't being done, because there's no proof of it working. I, I just love that, that logic. Well, we're not going to study it because there's no proof that it works. Um, they would ask for information and I would share what I had, which was usually some type of blog that was collecting the same information that I was collecting from uh, various websites and organizations who were trying to piece together what the hell was going on while uh, our government was shoving a, a really poorly thought out narrative down our freaking throats. Um, still waiting for that AIDS vaccine, Dr. Fauci. Has, has anybody seen Fauci? Where's Fauci? Anybody? Anybody seen Fauci? So I would share the information that I had, which unfortunately wasn't, wasn't reputable. But when you looked at the information itself, it was credible. It was just, oh, are you sharing a freaking blog? You're sharing a blog, refusing to look at where the blog got their information from, but because it was on a blog, it wasn't good enough. And that's the other thing, is when mass media, when, when our corporate media is not willing to discuss certain topics, everything else looks like it's fake or conspiracy theory or it's a joke and that you shouldn't take it seriously. And um, two years later, we're now learning that, or at least me and probably you knew that, you know, a lot of the stuff we we're being fed was BS. But I think a lot of the public, if they're opening their eyes, are learning that they've been lied to. They've been lied to a lot. They should never have forgotten they were lied to about the war in Iraq. They were lied to about the housing market in 2008. Everything's fine. American economy is stronger than it's ever been. Two weeks later. Uh, we need to give Wall Street as much money as they ask for. Because I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. The American public has been lied to repeatedly. Time and time again, not to its benefit. We don't seem to learn from this. Um... We're like an abusive wife that sticks around with the husband that keeps saying that, no, I'm not cheating on you. No, I don't have five credit cards. And, and yes, I made the house payment. No, I didn't go to the casino with the house payment. I don't know what you're talking about. And for some reason, we keep buying their BS. And unfortunately, at this time around, this time in particular. Um, I love how this number keeps getting thrown at me. Over a million people have died from this disease. Yeah, and you know what? It could have been prevented and they fucking knew it. They fucking knew it. All because no one was going to profit from the, the one thing that could have saved... What does Campbell say? 70% of people that were taking this medication did not contract the illness. 70%. You take that 1 million, 70% of them would still be here. Not hospitalized, not put on a fucking ventilator, not getting shitty medications that shuts down your kidneys and makes you drown in your own bodily fluids. Yeah. Um... The people that we trust, that we should trust, that we're supposed to trust, took advantage of us, profited from us, and fucking killed us. Don't forget that while they're talking about World War III.